Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we're going to discuss gastric carcinoma, which may not be considered such an important topic for medicine, but is definitely a very important topic for surgery. So I thought that for the sake of completion of this series, uh, I would touch upon gastric carcinoma in the medicine section, and then inshallah we can work on it um, in the surgery section. Um, gastric carcinoma is the third leading cause of cancer deaths worldwide, and it has a very poor prognosis since it remains asymptomatic, and when it's discovered, it's too late. Um, the general uh, pathology uh, is that um, there is usually a, an H. pylori infection or another uh, cause such as dietary nitrates, smoking, or any other for any other reason, there is intestinal metaplasia in the area. Um, because of gastritis, which leads to dysplasia and then carcinoma. Um, now, we've noticed that the uh, distal carcinoma um, is probably because of H. pylori, since we know that um, H. pylori infects the um, antrum of the stomach most commonly, and the proximal carcinoma is uh, probably not due to H. pylori. Um, so, um, then we're going to go for the risk factors, uh, which are H. pylori, smoking, alcohol, uh, nitrosamines, uh, which are the dietary associations, autoimmune gastritis, uh, adenomatous gastric polyps, previous partial gastrectomy, uh, Menetrier's disease, hereditary diffuse ca gastric cancer. Uh, we know that the E. cadherin gene uh, causes uh, the type of a cancer, which has uh, on biopsy, you're going to find um, histologically is going to be uh, of the diffuse type. We know that there's two types, intestinal and diffuse. Then we have familiar adenomatous polyposis. Then we have the clinical features. We've already discussed that it's asymptomatic and uh, there may be dyspepsia plus alarm features, alarm features such as weight loss, um, anemia, which occurs due to occult bleeding, uh, there may be vomiting due to gastric outlet obstruction, and then there's a hematemesis or a melena, um, excuse my spellings. Um, there may be a palpable epigastric mass. The spread a, can, uh, can occur um, to the supraclavicular lymph nodes, which is the Trezor sign. Uh, I may not be pronouncing it properly. Then it may spread to the umbilicus, and these are called sister Joseph's nodules. Then uh, if it spreads to the ovaries, we call it the Krukenberg tumor. The perineoplastic syndrome associated with gastric carcinoma uh, entails acanthosis nigricans, dermatomyositis, and thrombophobitis, also known as Trousseau's sign. Uh, it, may metast it, it commonly metastasizes to the liver, the lung, the peritoneum, and the bone marrow. The investigations to be done for diagnosis, the investigation of choices, upper GI endoscopy, plus biopsy, and we take the biopsy from multiple sites at the edge of the ulcer. Um, and then, well, once uh, we have diagnosed, this, uh, diagnosed it as gastric carcinoma, we further take a CT. The CT helps us identify intraperitoneal spread and liver mets or liver mets. Uh, we can do a PET scan to check for metastasis in the whole body. Um, we can then uh, move on to the management. The prime management is going to happen in the surgical department. Uh, they're probably gonna go for a total gastrectomy uh, with a lymph adenectomy, and it depends on the staging and the classification of the gastric carcinoma. Um, they may do a partial gastrectomy with through and do a reconstruction, such as a Bill Roth II reconstruction or a Roussan Y reconstruction. Now, these are all things that we'll be discussing in the surgery section. If it's inoperable, then they're probably going to send it back to medicine or they're going to refer them to oncology department uh, where they will um, give them chemo. Uh, five fluorouracil and cisplatin, um, and for her to overexpression, if the tumor has a hurt has a hurt to overexpression, uh, trastuzumab is a good drug to use. Um, if there is um, dysphagia or recurrent bleeding, uh, the patient may have to undergo endoscopic laser ablation therapy. Um, if there is obstruction at the cardia or the pylorus due to the cancer, uh, then 
endoscopic dilation or the inter insertion of a metallic stent may improve those uh, symptoms or those problems. And um, if the patient has uh, extreme vomiting, uh, we can give them temporary relief from it by inserting an NG tube. All right, that's it for today.